what's something that gets an unnecessary amount of hate? Tom from Tom and Jerry, he just wants to chill while that little piece of shit annoys him all the time. As a kid I always liked Tom just a hard working cat trying his best to do his duty. At least with Tom and Jerry there's an air of playfulness to it. Then you get Sylvester and Tweety Bird, where that smug yellow turd is a big asshole about it. That one spoon in your kitchen you hate for no reason. I'm sorry but no, F that thing. The only reason I keep it around is to scare the rest of them into obedience. Anything that becomes overrated will stir up a counter-movement of hate. From Skyrim to Neil deGrasse Tyson. The top comment will be adoring said idol. But the most upvoted first reply will be saying it's trash. It's like people feel like they have to correct the 5 star rating by voting 1 star. Even though their real opinion is 3.5 stars. This is why a band like Nickelback, whose music is generic and a bit dumb, but still generally okay, can be widely described as the worst band of all time. Or why people on Reddit never say, I played Fortnite, and it had some decent ideas but it wasn't really for me. 6 tenths. The middle ground gets attacked from both sides. Bandwagon hating on something in general is a huge problem monsieur. I try to make a point to have a full explanation of why I dislike something before I go hating on it. Also, I am open to debates and dislike. Ever see the hate content creators on YouTube? Just pick an upcoming release of a game, movie, album whatever, they will have a 10 minutes and 5 seconds video about how it sucks. The best is when they start spewing nonsense about the company only in it for the money when they are making videos to maximize ad revenue and obviously couldn't care less about what they are talking about. The problem is content is rated and monetized by how many eyeballs look. If you scream the new Star Wars is a shit pile of garbage, at hash it, at queue it more people will click your videos. People that agree and disagree. If your title is the new Star Wars is pretty good, who is going to click on that? So now we have hundreds of videos calling Star Wars bad and the general consensus is it must be bad. Because all these videos tell me it is bad. With a colorful thumbnail with big text, and their face real big looking angry. The word moist. I'm just describing this nice cake I'm eating and you're acting like I'm reciting ancient curses. From the Satanic Bible. I'm so confused how half the population just decided they hate that word. Are they just immediately picturing a moist vagina or what? And if so, what's wrong with that? Because they don't actually hate the word. They just read it online somewhere and wanted to follow the trend. Same thing with the Annie Pineapple on Pizza crowd. Whom instead of simply having different preferences, suddenly collectively decided pineapple pizza lovers are literally Satan because it became such a trend to hate it. It's all fake. Everything Reddit decides it doesn't like. Reddit is like getting together all the bullied kids of their generation to unite in bullying. Others. That explains a lot actually. And what Reddit doesn't like is often something that it itself is guilty of. It talks a big storm about how awful, cringy celebrity worship is until it bullies a kid for not. Liking Keanu Reeves. It talks about how horrible social media is with its likes blah blah dopamine hit like there isn't. Weekly drama about karma whoring and fishing for upvotes. It had a months long war with Instagram meme accounts and low effort YouTube videos stealing Reddit. Content like there aren't entire subs dedicated to laughing at stuff lifted straight from Twitter. On this sub alone I see the conversation flip flop between pep talks about looking out for yourself first and how being accommodating, empathetic will make people treat you like a doormat, too. Throwing around the word, narcissist, and complaining that no one has compassion and only cares about themselves. Asterisk asterisk edit. Asterisk asterisk I'm getting a lot of replies saying I'm treating Reddit as a collective. And you're absolutely right, I'm treating it as a collective just as Reddit treats everything it doesn't like as a collective in an attempt to highlight a point. I can say Instagram is more than influencers and meme accounts full of stolen content. 
Facebook is more than Trump supporting grandparents and anti-vaxxers. Most K-pop fans are unhinged and delusional, etc. But that doesn't change people's perceptions of social media toxicity or the platforms that have come to represent it in their minds. But any criticism of Reddit is met with a barrage of it depends on the sub or you're conflating different people or any vague argument meant to paint Reddit as somehow different. Being born in this generation because our music sucks. I don't get that. We were born in the generation where we can go to YouTube or Spotify and listen to literally any music since the beginning of recording of music to stuff released literally five minutes ago. Being born in this generation is for music. Fantastic. I agree. We can listen to our music as well as any music made before us. This really is the best time to be alive as a music fan. Robert Pattinson. Sure, he got famous for the Twilight movies. And no, they're not very good. But all of the weird independent films he's made after that really scream that this poor guy just wants to be appreciated as an actor. One film will change anyone's mind about him. Lighthouse. A damn masterpiece. That guy can act. Everyone. If you're a human being there is likely many reasons someone would want you dead and countless more. Why people would think you are a horrible person. Humanity in general needs to chill. Hating on any version of escapism. Be it movies, video games, music, books, etc. Makes zero fucking sense to me as all are purely optional. No one has to partake in any kind of escapism they don't like so what the fuck is the point of hating on a genre of music or certain movies or whatever. It seems like people on that level just want to be mad at something for the sake of being mad. I remember being in college when a friend stated that my enjoyment of video games was a sin because it distracted me from God. I found out later that he was hopped up on a lot of drugs and the stuff he had taken messed up his head something fierce. Years later when I met him he had no recollection of college. The most celebrated Canadian alt-rock band of the mid-90s, The Bare Naked Ladies. If you've got a problem with the most celebrated Canadian alt-rock band of the mid-90s, The Bare Naked Ladies, you've got a problem with me. And I suggest you let that one marinate. ETA my first award, and that's what I appreciate about you. Vegetables. I eat them regularly since I was a kid and it just blows my mind that there are people who take eating vegetables as punishment or they need to learn to like it or cook it because somehow they find it disgusting in raw state. I can't imagine not eating at least one kind of vegetable once a day. I think a lot of the disdain comes from parents who don't know how to cook. I hated a lot of things growing up but it was because my parents couldn't cook worth shit. It resulted in me learning how to cook and taking it seriously to right their wrongs. Now I enjoy vegetables. My kids have always eaten their vegetables. But every fucking September, they suddenly pump the brakes and go on strike. Every new school year, they meet some new kid in class who openly opposes vegetables and gets the other kids to agree. So now my kids feel like weirdos for eating peas. So they come home going. Bailey doesn't eat vegetables. Parker thinks carrots are gross. First of all, Bailey is the dog's name and second, Parker is an idiot. You're eating your damn stir fry. By November, they settle down. We've banned several shows, movies and removed books that have characters bitching about vegetables. Or school. Fuck off with that noise. Broccoli is awesome and so is math. I hate that children are targeted for such a tired, unnecessary trope. People who have been in jail. I mean they already paid for their crime. Can we let them have a regular job and join society again without spitting on them for the rest of their life? We got a new operations manager in the largest of the facilities I cover at work. And he decided to do background checks on all employees fired a forklift driver who has been here seven years because he was a convicted felon. Like come on, 
The guy has worked in this place for seven years. Been one of the hardest workers and what? He's pulling the long con or something? Ridiculous. Did he lie about the felony conviction on his application when he was hired? It would be an understandable thing to do. If someone had been there that long without issue I'd probably ignore it if it was me. But that would at least be arguable cause. Presumably yes. But seven years ago, the manager of this facility seems to find a way to make me respect him less every day. The main reason you'd not want to hire a felon is simply because you're playing the odds. Right? Someone who has previously committed a serious crime is more likely to do so than someone who hasn't. But a much better indicator of someone not being a problem employee is asterisk 7 years of not being a problem employee, asterisk. The real shame is that the prison and justice system in America basically encourage recidivism through poor care, lack of any real rehab, and exactly these practices after the person gets out. There are places in the world where prison actually rehabilitates people and lowers recidivism here in America if we rehabilitated people. It means less profit for prisons, wasted money from minimum occupancy contracts. So we can't go helping citizens at the expense of corporations. Basically anything that everyone under the age of 15 isn't a. The irony is, the majority, plurality of people that hate on it. The thing that they were into at that age was the thing the internet hated at that time in the same way. Fortnite bad Minecraft good? I remember when Reddit, and the internet in general, didn't like Minecraft because it was full of cringy preteens, in the exact same way that Fortnite is hated now. I guarantee you, in 5 to 7 years time, Fortnite will be seen in the same way as Minecraft is seen now. It happened with Minecraft. It happened with Call of Duty. It happened with RuneScape. It happened with Halo. Heck, the likes of World of Warcraft and Dungeons and Dragons always used to be stereotyped as that game that only loser nerds in their mom's basement play, which was a dumb assumption to begin with. But now anyone and their dog can say they have an account, campaign and no one bats an eye, you'd be raked over the coals for admitting that a decade or so ago, people loved Minecraft when it first launched. It wasn't until it had been out for a few years, two to three I think, that people started hating on it. Any media that's particularly popular with teenage girls, not just media but really anything that is popular with teenage and young adult women, their media, hobbies, and what they enjoy apparently just isn't seen as valid or worthy by a large segment of the population. Why do people care so much if someone enjoys pop music or chick flicks, or wearing Uggs or drinks? PSLs? Why is something inferior if it's popular with young women? On a related note also dismissing things girls, women like as either just trying to be cool, or just liking it because there's hot guys. The whole, basic white girl, shit has gotten annoying. Literally anything girls do is basic. Anakin in the Star Wars prequels. Everyone is focused on how hammy and bad his performance was. Meanwhile he speaks with the same cadence and delivery that Darth Vader had in all the original trilogy movies. He nailed it perfectly, but all it gets is hate. I don't think anyone could have made that dialogue work. Harrison Ford was right when he said, George, you can type this shit, but you sure can't say it. Single quote. A theory I've come across is that since Star Wars is from a long time ago in a galaxy far far away, that it was translated and the prequels just botched the translation like a bad anime dub. Guy Fieri, he seems like a genuinely good person. In 2017 and 2018 he cooked for thousands of victims and first responders affected by the California wildfires. As a meat eater, I'm going to have to go with vegans. I don't think I will ever be one. Personally, I also don't think they deserve as much hate as they get. Especially when you consider that most, all of it is a result of shit they don't do. The theory I've heard is that there's this weird cognitive dissonance in place. 
where on some level we agree that vegans actually have a point. But admitting they have a point would require us to either change our habits or admit that we're hypocrites, neither of which is desirable. So people take the third option and bash the vegans back down to our level, creating an anti-vegan circle jerk to resolve the dissonance. It no longer matters if vegans have a point, because now you can counter that they're preachy, or they're rude, or they shove it down our throats, etc. But good, vegans have to carefully walk on plant-based eggshell substitutes and assure us that their diet is a purely personal choice. Because if they don't we default to viewing their diet as a personal attack on our morals and actions. Greater than plant-based eggshell substitutes I'm stealing this. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.